Well, m myself, I'm a geologist, so I studied past climate changes over longer time periods, uh, hundreds of thousands or even millions of years by studying deep marine cores. And um, so from geological records, from ice cores as well, we know that climate has always been changing throughout the Earth's history. And this would be the argument of a lot of people who would say, what is this panic about? Because climate has always been changing. So even before humans arrived to this planet, um, those changes were related to processes of astronomical or mm -hmm. planetary scale, um, like solar activity, yeah. angle of yeah. Earth axis in relation to the sun. And the recent climate change that we are all talking about, is it human-made or is it part of the natural sequence of events that we have li little control over? Okay. Well, it's true to say that climate has always changed. Uh, it has changed through the geological history of the Earth. There have been times, if you go back several hundred millions of years, when even carbon dioxide was higher than it is at present. There were times when the Earth was much warmer and indeed much colder than it is at present. And these uh, have been driven by various, uh, various internal and external forces acting on the planet. Uh, the most recent drastic change, I suppose, has been the succession of uh, Pleistocene glaciers that uh, traversed the planet or part of the planet and then retreated, came back again. And we now know that those are driven uh, essentially by long-term changes in the Earth's orbit around the Sun um, in terms of the attraction of the, the big planets of Jupiter which, uh, and Saturn, which disrupt the Earth's orbit a little and uh, change the distribution of radiation on the Earth over very long time periods. And we're talking here about time periods of 100,000 years or maybe 25,000 years. And these have been the pacemakers of the Ice Age, as we now, we now know. But in terms of where we are today, we're now seeing a, a very rapid change in warming uh, on, on a time scale which we haven't really experienced during human occupants of the planet. Many of these astronomically driven changes of the long-term past occurred when really there weren't, there were, certainly weren't five billion people on the planet. There might have been uh, only a few million people in some cases and in the earlier times none at all. So we can't simply go back to those kinds of events and say it's a natural phenomenon. And the reason for that is that we can now uh, use our computerized models to more or less prove what's causing the current set of changes to occur because given the great advances we could, we, we've made now in computing power, we can run climate models uh, which um, we can replicate recent past temperature changes in very accurately. We can run them, for example, with a pre-industrial level of carbon dioxide in them um, we can then see to what extent does our model replicate the changes of the past century or so. And when we do that uh, with a pre-industrial level of carbon dioxide, it doesn't agree at all with what's been happening uh, to global climate in the past few decades. It's only when we put in the uh, current values of CO2 into our models that we find our models then replicate almost perfectly what's been happening with the Earth's temperature. And this is kind of um, a corroboration of the fact that for the first time in human occupants of the Earth, um, it's us that's controlling climate. Um, the, it's anthropogenic influences that are determining which way our temperature uh, trend is going. And for the first time in human occupants of the planet, therefore, climate is a prisoner of people. Um, unlike uh, those people that went before us who uh, were very much prisoners of, of climate in terms of a harvest, in terms of saving enough of their crop to tide them over the winter. Um, they, they, they were dependent completely on the vicissitudes of climate, whereas today, uh, really, we have to recognise that um, now climate is dependent on us for its future course at least in the next century or two and um, that's why it's so imperative for us to play our part in ensuring that over the next few decades we don't um, rule out the sort of uh, the possibility of, of having a more benign future for those that come after us in terms of tackling 
what we now know to be the causes of climate change, which are undis undisputably now recognised as anthropogenic. Mm -hmm.